there's no one who's stepping up with a clear interest in getting a trade accomplished for Julio Jones. That wouldn't be the problem for the Packers. If they wanted to trade Aaron Rodgers, there would be teams that would be ready to go. They'd be ready to bid. And as I've said before, and Chris, you agree with me, they're never going to get more than they would get right now for Aaron Rodgers. This is the time to strike if you're going to trade him. But the Packers continue to dig in their heels. And Rodgers, as we spent time breaking down yesterday, his appearance on Sports Center, the things he said about the people, persons, paper people. Here's Matt LaFleur, the one person in management that Aaron Rodgers doesn't hate addressing the Aaron Rodgers comments from Monday's Sports Center during a Tuesday press conference. Let's hear from Coach LaFleur. I'm guessing you probably listened to Aaron yesterday. Um, you kind of hinted that, in his opinion, there's a people problem in the organization. How do you view that? Yeah, uh, I thought, uh, just like Aaron said, that was a heck of a tribute to Kenny Mayne. And, um, it was pretty cool that he went on there for him. And, you know, growing up, Kenny was – he was definitely one of my favorites watching on SportsCenter. Hesitance to, to be back is the, the people issue that he referred to last night. How, how do you go about fixing that as an organization so that he does return? Well, I think we're, you know, like, like you mentioned, Aaron definitely knows how we feel about him. Um, you know, how, how he's such an important part to our football team, such an important part to our organization. And, you know, we're just going to continue to try to, work through this and hopefully can get him back in the building at some point. You know, I'd like to get inside of Matt LaFleur's brain because I think one of the primary thoughts at the front of, what is that? The frontal lobe, oh. cerebral cortex, <laughs> right. oblongata, somewhere in there, he's got to be thinking, I've gone 26 and six and I got to deal with this stuff. Oops. Almost. That was close. That was as close as I'm, we've ever gotten. I'm, Damn. I'm, I'm tw- no, no, you've said it. What do you mean it's close well, as we've ever got? I'm talking you've about you. You've said it. We know. We're talking about okay. you. You. You're a different ga- You're a different ball game. You're in a different league, okay? Yes, I'm in the minor leagues. You're in the majors. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, I mean, the guy's 26 and 6. He's come in, and two years ago, he threaded the needle with the whole audible thing, the the controversy that Aaron Rodgers, I believe, specifically engineered through Mike Silver, fellow Cal graduate, engineered through that interview that Silver did. Sure. Putting the issue front and center so it could be hashed out. Rodgers knew where this was going. Wait a minute. You're going to give me two plays in the huddle, and that's that's it? And I have to pick one of the two at the line of scrimmage based upon the defense, and I have no discretion as to what to do beyond that, and I can't change the play? Are you kidding me? That's how we're going to do this? No, that's not how we're going to do this. And he won. Yeah. And LaFleur was smart to let him win. Right. 26 and 6, two 13 and 3 seasons, two NFC championships. And he's the one who's thrown in the middle. He's caught in the crossfire between Rodgers and the front office. And he's the one that's got to stand up there and answer the questions the day after Rodgers says what he says. Right. Look, I, I've said this before as it relates to teammates. Roger's attitude, his behavior, his demeanor, his wishes, justified as they may be, they put others in a tough spot. Yes, they do. And he's put his head coach in a very tough spot. He 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 has. I you know again, it's not. You're right. I mean, ever since Matt Lafleur's gotten there, every off season, it's been dealing with drama, and he's not comfortable with it. You could see right there, and, and you know, knowing Matt a little bit and being around him before. That's this is not the kind of stuff he wants to do. He kind of wants to just be inconspicuous and coach the football team and have his relationship with his guys that way. But yeah, Rodgers, his situation, his actions, everything like that, yes, are making it hard on the football team. There's no doubt about that. But Mike, but, but anybody with a pulse paying attention to NFL football could have told you this is what the hell was going to happen when you draft a quarterback in the first round and your team is in the Super Bowl window and the end for your quarterback is nowhere near in sight. So I will say once again, I don't love all the things that Aaron Rodgers is doing, but The jump-off point for all these problems is still Green Bay, and you and I both know we could have predicted this was going to happen when they drafted Jordan Love on the next day of the show and talked about... did. Yeah, exactly. So, 
that's uh, that's where Matt Lafleur. He's probably going. Damn, I wish Aaron would come here and take some of the pressure off me. But he can also walk upstairs and go. Damn, you two put a lot of damn pressure on me. You two, as in Gutenkus and Mark Murphy. And that's where it's you know a tough tough call there. Let, let me tell you something. I'm going to yeah. go back. Yeah. Two years ago, when Matt Lafleur emerged as a surprise candidate yeah. to stand in the shoes previously filled by the likes of. Vince Lombardi, Mike Holmgren. Th- that's enough. Those two guys. Fiery. McCarthy demanding. won a Super Bowl. We can Mike McCarthy that. too. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. but I but I, I'm talking about the I know the, and and McCar- and the the guys that we know are type double A positive. Right. My way or the highway head coaches. I Matt Lafleur has done enough. That if he was wired a different way from a personality standpoint, there are other coaches who would use that to leverage more power and influence for himself. And I think one of the reasons they picked Matt LaFleur when it was Mark Murphy and Brian Gutekunst deciding who we're going to hire for this job, I think they're looking for a personality type where they don't have to worry about the guy having success and trying to take over. I agree. Because at some point, you know what? Matt LaFleur's got to try to take over. At some point, Matt LaFleur's got to go to those guys and say, what in the hell are you doing to me? I've given you 26 wins in 32 regular season games, and you have continued to put me in a difficult spot with the best player in the NFL, and you won't fix it, and I'm caught in the middle of it, and I don't appreciate it, and curse word, curse word, curse word right. yourself. I, I, you know, and, and, and I just don't think LaFleur is wired to do that, and I think it's one of the reasons why they hired him, because they predicted he wouldn't upset the apple cart on behalf of Aaron Rodgers if and when they hatched this plan to go out and draft his replacement and Rodgers wasn't happy about it, LaFleur's not going to join forces with Rodgers where other coaches, and we know who they are, would be tempted to say, hey, Goody, hey, Murphy, what the hell are you guys doing? We're, we're, and, and, and then that coach begins a campaign with the fan base, with the board of directors, with the executive committee to try to force them to put pressure on the guys who are keeping the coach from having – the best possible chance he can have to build sure. a legacy in Green Bay. Yeah, no, I, Mike, I don't disagree with anything you said. I mean, yeah, I mean, that Matt LaFleur is not that type of guy. There's no doubt. I don't doubt that that is part of the reason, you know, they, they got involved. It's, it, I think it's one of the things they look for in Green Bay. They look for coaches. It, really, ever since I've been a teenager, it feels like guys that they feel like they won't step on the shoes of the front office. Not, not, not Holmgren. Well, Holmgren wanted it, but that's ultimately right. What, what led him to get the hell out of there and go to Seattle so he could call the shots because there was that little issue then. And, you know, as we know, Green Bay, they've, they're a great scouting department. They are a great front office for what they've done this long to be this relevant all these years. There is a real process and, and beauty to what they do. And, you know, those people have continued throughout that organization. Most of the people in that front office have grown up and got all their, you know, pelts on their horse in that organization. So they've been taught to run it that way, and which leads you to hire coaches like you're talking about, Matt LaFleur, which I'm with you. Uh, I think you're, you're right to a, to a degree. That is right why they hired him. The Brian Gutekunst situation isn't the cause of the Aaron Rodgers consternation. It's a symptom of a structure that has been in place for decades right. in Green Bay. And that's why this whole idea that it's about the people is so ludicrous. You have, at the core of the Packers organization, a brain trust that runs the show without input from anyone else, without input from the coaching staff, Definitely without input from the players, without input from the fans, without input from the media. They know what works, and they're the ones calling the shots, and that's what Aaron Rodgers is ultimately pissed off about, and that's what Matt LaFleur is incapable of fighting against, and that's why we are where we are. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, and, and you know, to what you're saying with the organization and, you know, the process, you know, talking about Gutenkust and all those type of things, you're right. That's exactly right. It's what's made them really good. They're, you know, I mean, really, ever since Brett Favre, it's been very few years that we can really think of where Green Bay hasn't been at least relevant in a playoff contending type football team. And that's great. But where the formula that we talk about in their front office that's made them consistently good is awesome. The other thing I would say is, like you heard me say a few weeks ago, you also have to gauge every now and then and go, wait, wait, this is our formula that's made us good. 
but we, we we got Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, and we're really great. good. And let's go all in. It can, it handicaps yeah. them at times because of the structure they're always trying to follow. At least in my opinion, the formula that has allowed them to be consistently good since Bob Harlan and Ron Wolf joined yeah. forces because it was twenty years of crapola, as you would say, for yes. the Packers from Lombardi until until Ron Wolf got there. But that formula that allows them to be consistently good has pre- prevented them from being as great. Great, as they that's can the be. way to say it. Exactly right. You're right. Thank you for cleaning up my English language speaking. That's not that good. But yes, that's exactly the, the, the right. The saying is: the saying is, don't let perfect be the enemy of the good. For the Packers, good has been the enemy of, of the perfect. You're right. Exactly right. I think they've dropped the ball from that sense a little bit throughout the Favre and Rodgers era. To where, okay, let's abandon. You know, like you're saying, the normal formula and go all in or make this move that we usually don't make because we're really close and this gets us over the hump. And, you know, yes, you can you can praise all the consistency and all the good and everything like that. But you can also sit here and realistically say you had two of what I look at as the five or six greatest quarterbacks ever. And you've only won a Super Bowl each with either one. And I think that's a problem, too. You know, when I look at it that way. All right, uh, Matt LaFleur also addressed the quarterback who is now entering year two, who at some point presumably will be the starting quarterback of the Packers, Jordan Love. Here's LaFleur talking about Love. I think Jordan is definitely, you can tell he put some work in in this offseason on his own. I think the ball is really jumping out of his hands well right now. And, you know, it's day two of OTAs and, you know, all we've really done is thrown routes on air. We had some seven on seven, but you guys could see that the team periods, they're not full speed. So, um, you know, we're excited about just some of the progress we've seen with him, but certainly there's a, there's a long way to go there. You know, running back Aaron Jones also said that Love looks a lot more comfortable, especially when it comes to taking command of the huddle. He's going to continue to grow, and I'm happy to be here working with him, Jones said. Jones also said that, that Aaron Rodgers didn't say anything to him about possibly not being there, and Jones would have still re-signed. This is home. I love it here. So uh, Aaron Jones recognizing the very real possibility that it will be Jordan Love, maybe this year, maybe next year, but at some point he'll be working with Love they like what they see so far, and they got to get this guy ready. That's right. And this is his opportunity. This is a point you made the other day. Aaron Rodgers is yielding voluntarily to Jordan Love the opportunity to come in and grow into the role. Yeah, grow into the role, get reps, get better, right? And, you know, the, the, the Packers players and the coaches, they got no choice. They got to support this guy. They got They need him. I mean, again, we don't know what the hell Aaron Rodgers is going to do. I know, as we've talked about a lot, I mean, yes, he is the type of guy that might just go, the hell with it, I'm not playing this year. I don't like you guys. It's about the people, and you screwed over your best people and me. So, yeah, I, they, they, they need him ready for just in case that scenario happens this year. And, of course, they need to put the pressure on Jordan Love and need growth there because ultimately I think we all believe, and I think they, they got to even believe, even if Aaron Rodgers comes back this year, this is it. So love's got to take over after this. And that's why this is an important time for his growth and getting better. And it's good to hear that there, there has been some. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC sports.